Okay, so we have an idea in our head now. Uh, an idea for our illustration and we're just itching to get drawing. However, it's always good to kind of pause and, and think through what you're doing a bit more. So sometimes I just dive right into an image and start painting. But in this tutorial, I really want to take some time to do some proper research and collect some reference images that are really going to help me do this image. So just something to note, because I am doing this video for an online tutorial, I have to be careful about sharing images that I don't own copyright to. So it limits what I can show you in the, the video. So I've stuck to relative free images, stock images that I've purchased, and some public domain images, and a couple of my own photographs. But yeah, just bear in mind that there's other images in the background that you might not see. Maybe images from movies or art styles of other artists I like. Just something to bear in mind. So why collect reference? What's the point behind it? Well, the obvious answer is maybe there's something you need to draw and you're not sure how to draw it, all right? Something in your image which you're unsure about. So for me, this image that I'm working on, there's certain things that I'm not 100% clear about. Maybe the interior of the setting, the, the house that these kids are in. So I, I'm going to collect a lot of reference for houses, um, kind of fancy Victorian style, old school kind of houses. Without doing that, you know, I could just paint something and say, hey, you know, that's fine, that's that's good enough. But just having that reference really helps bring some authenticity and believability to the image. I'm also going to think about, well, what are these ghosts going to look like and what are these characters going to look like? It's hard to reference, find reference for ghosts because, well, you can't really go out and take photographs of a ghost that easily, right? Whether you believe in them or not. So yeah, you're, you're relying on limited reference. So I'm going to have to be a bit more inventive with that. What else? The characters themselves, the kids, I'll probably reference some uh, 90s kind of clothing. Uh, just different photographs of groups of kids. Uh, things like that. Style-wise, I'm going to draw my own style, but I'm going to try and... I've had an idea of trying to kind of look at some old illustrations from Victorian times and see what I can find there. Maybe that'll spark some inspiration or something. Sources of reference can vary, right? Um, it really depends on the project. Personally, I usually use a combination of things. So images from books, uh, maybe photographs of my own. Maybe I'll go to a library if it's possible, or museum to collect reference and, and learn about something. Online photographs, stock websites. Uh, even TV shows, films, basically anywhere. Also other artists that inspire me. I tend not to go too heavy on the other artist reference when I'm doing an illustration, just because I don't want to be too heavily influenced by someone else. But yeah, like, there's a wide range of resources to kind of gather reference from. It's quite easy just to go on the internet these days and, and Google images and search for our images and just collect them all from a search engine, which is fine especially if you're strapped for time, but I like to kind of get the books out and, you know, go a bit deeper if I can. Once I have my images gathered in, in one place, I tend to put them all on one big image file. So maybe A3 size, I just chuck them all in. You know, there's other ways of doing this. You can maybe use software like Pinterest, but I, I like to do it in Photoshop. I just chuck them all into a big image file because then I can draw on top and make notes quite easily. So this is my finished mood board for this illustration. And when I say finished, it's never really 100% finished. I see a mood board as something that can evolve over time as I go through the illustration process. So I might start drawing and I'm like, oh, I've not really referenced this particular thing that I need to do it. So I can add it in, you know? Or I might find an image by accident when I'm not expecting it and say, oh, this would be perfect. I need to put it into my mood board. Generally, though, at this stage, I have a good collection of images, which just forms the basis of my illustration. It's going to really help me, you know. And to be honest, the reference is there to be used to aid you in your design choices. So it's not about copying it directly. It's more about inspiring. And you might take elements here and there. So I might, you know, look at... Uh, an interior and say, oh, I want that floor pattern on my, my image or something like that. But it's more about inspiration and informing your design. And a lot of these images I might not even reference. 
But just going through the process of gathering reference, I'm starting to learn about the subject more and I'm kind of internalizing it a bit more. So let's look at my reference board in a bit more detail. So you'll see I've got quite a lot of images here, but they fall into three main categories. So I've got the, the setting, lots of interior images. I've got characters in the bottom right, and I've got some illustration samples in the top right. So yeah, I've basically collected images which I think might be useful when I come to start drawing. So a lot of that is to do with interior stuff. So stairwells, windows, lighting. So a lot of these photographs have interest in lighting. What else? Just decor in general, uh, fancy decor. So I don't think I'll be going this, this fancy, but it's good to have it as a reference point. Uh, if I do this, it could overwhelm the image and distract from the characters. Doors. Random chair, a window. <laughs> you know, just something about this just appealed to me, so I put it in the mood board. Details, which might come in handy. Uh, I've got images of kind of run-down buildings with plants and stuff creeping in. I don't know if I'm going to go down this route, but it's an option, maybe. Again, more stairwells. and. Things like this pattern on the floor. I mean, I might be doing my painting and think, what does the floor look like? What's on my reference board? Aha, that's perfect. I also like some of these photographs for their composition. So, you know, another reason I do Photoshop for my reference board is if I like a photograph, I can just draw over the top. So this has a great composition. I like how the stairs go down like this. I can imagine characters here. And maybe a ghost character looking down on them up here. I can also take notes. I'm not sure how easy it would be to do all this in another reference gathering program like Pinterest. So for me, this is quite handy being able to draw on top of my reference board. Yeah, so these images have great compositions in them, which I can maybe uh, steal, in inverted commas, <laughs> borrow, be inspired by. Uh, yeah, and great lighting as well. I've also got some exteriors. I don't think we'll see the exterior of my house, the Haunted Manor, but it's good to kind of think about what would it look like if you did see it. So I'm thinking something along this kind of direction. Yeah, it's just good to kind of get the context in your head. Characters. So I've got quite a few character images, photographs of kids, photographs of like kind of these old school Victorian style photographs of people, which will come really handy when I try out my ghost character or uh, maybe I've got paintings on the wall of you know old paintings right so just anything i think might come in handy when i'm painting for the kids lots of bright colors different types of kids i imagine my group is going to be something like this or like these guys uh, i've got some cues to what they might be wearing so i like this tracksuit style and these colors so this is kind of what i'm going for with the kids and I want to really contrast with the dull greys and desaturated colours of these photographs. And lastly, just some illustration references. So I found these on the British Library Archives website, and they're just really nice illustrations. Now, my style is nothing like this, and I don't imagine my image is going to be anywhere near as detailed or nuanced as these. But there's just something about them that I really liked, and so I put them on my mood board as a bit of uh, inspiration. They just feel quite desolate and creepy. This image here really spoke to me. I really love this image, and I think it's because a couple of reasons. I love how this 
ghost apparition forms out of these, I don't know what you call them, smoke, wisps. I just love how it forms. And I, that's something I really want to bring into my image if I go down that ghost route. I also like how the character's bending over backwards like this and looking down on this character. Something really creepy about that. It might be something worth exploring in my own image. I also like how these images, you've got the these creepy characters, ghosts kind of merging from shadows here. And it's very subtle, very simple, but really effective. So I might try something like that, I'm not sure. I like how this ghost is, you know, you can see this guy underneath. So again, it might be a good reference point when I come to do my my characters. How do I make them look ghostly or transparent? Just a few other reference images. Uh, I really like this guy. Just makes me laugh. Don't know why. It's just kind of goofy. So yeah, and I've got some kind of patterns up here, again from same sources, so British Library, old, old publications. And if I come to do some detailing in my scene in the background, then that might come in handy. Again, it's worth bearing in mind that not everything on this reference board is going to make it into my image. It's more about uh, inspiration. Uh, having stuff to hand so when you start painting you're not looking for stuff i mean you might end up doing that as well but having a solid mood board at your disposal is just makes your life a bit easier and also going through this process kind of builds up in your head the the scene and clarifies it so when it comes time to paint you've got a good understanding of exactly what you're painting Task 2. So, time to create a reference mood board. Basically just collect some relevant reference images, things that you think might help you, especially if there's stuff you're not sure how you're going to draw in your idea. But then, basically just arrange them in some way, either with Photoshop or something else, or some other software, whatever you want to do. And then just think about the setting, the characters, the mood and the style, and collect images which are relevant to those things. That's it. Have fun.